you will be able to see quite a few interesting facts about the outlook of the Indian market. Now, at the same time, we as Nova Space, we would like to address the needs of our clients and of people who would like to work with us. We say, look, Indian market needs much more granularity in the future, and we are working on that now. Hey, Space Watchers, and welcome back to Space Cafe Radio. Today, we have some very interesting announcements to unmantle. It's the announcement of Nova Space to open a new office in India. And I have the great pleasure now to sit together with Subhi Damia, the upcoming managing director of the Indian office, and Rainer Horn. Rainer and Subhi, how are you doing today? Hi, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share this news with Spacewatch. Very well, thank you. Thank you for having us over. Tell us more about this announcement to open the office in India. Why that? And give us some context on that. Well, India is a rising space force. India is a rising space country. We see India being active domestically, but also internationally. We have been active in India for several years. My personal activities in India goes back to 2012. So we saw how things are developing in different space parts. And now following the merger one and a half years ago, we decided that we will embark proper on a building office in India. Can you tell us a bit more about your own background? Is space something new for you? So how did you move into that? So by qualification, I'm a chartered accountant and company secretary. So I have a qualification in finance, but I have worked with Deloitte for more than a decade. And for the last three, four years, I was working in space sector consultancy. And prior to that, I was working in renewable energy and power sector consulting. So when we were trying to set the practice together for space sector, we realized that, of course, privatization has happened in the past three, four years in our country. But we also need some dedicated or like decadal of experience people in space sector to fill the white gaps or the white spaces that are existing in the country. For instance, policy benchmarking, what happened in Luxembourg, what happened in, uh, let's say, the other economies of the world and where is India today and how do we bridge the gap? Hence, we embarked on a journey with Nova Space thinking that the white spaces of the country could be addressed and also India reaching out to the world and the world reaching out to the country. So can you elaborate a bit more on that? So why is India in the spotlight right now when it comes to space? I think India is in the spotlight in every other sector as well. Fair point, fair point on that. But as we are space geeks, we want to see the space angle. No, I think the prime minister of the country is interested. I think the government norms and the reforms that we are seeing in the sector. So we know that the government is inclined to have space as one of the transformational sectors. But to be fair, space is not new for the country. We have seen ISRO making positive strides since, I don't know, a couple of decades now. But the privatization is what has recently happened, given the population, the energy and enthusiasm of the country and the youth especially, seeing young entrepreneurs actually taking a lot of risk in this deep tech sector. So when I have to talk about, let's say, the top five startups of the country, the CEOs put together will have an average age of, let's say, 26, 27. That's about all. So the enthusiasm, the experience, along with the government push, I think that's what's driving the country today. But I'd also like to hear about Rena's opinion on it, given that I have an inside-out view of this. Maybe what's yours outside in view? Yes, we have seen that India is getting much more active. We see a news companies coming out of India. We see people working in the field, especially in the downstream sector. We see launch companies popping up and inquiring for our services so at the same time, India is just a significant player in the world economy and especially in serving also the global south. With space technology and space services, we see a lot of potential for the country, but also a lot of potential for us. As a globally leading consulting firm, I think we just cannot ignore India. We have to be active there. I cannot agree more. Maybe you can help us to understand. We know the activities of ISRO over the last decade, as you mentioned. And then there was a period where the entire new space or startup mentality in the space sector, the commercial space companies, were very limited. And that seems to bubbling now under the surface. We, you mentioned there are a number of companies already out of the myth or so, but it's the entire regulation 
in favor of the new space economy or how do you see the status right now? Definitely, the entire regulation is in favor of the startup ecosystem. So we saw the launch of InSpace, that is the designated regulatory for the sector. We saw the inauguration of ISPA, that is the Indian Space Association, that was formally launched by the Prime Minister himself. And in fact, it was one of a kind launch because the Prime Minister himself was available for two and a half, three hours at the time of the launch. So all of that, we have seen the driver being the government and the regulators to push and drive it. So all of these developments have happened only in the past three, four years. Prior to that, we only had ISRO. Once InSpace was launched and formed, and then ISPA was launched and formed, and then we had so many startups. So to give a perspective, in the last three years, we have seen about 250 plus startups that have emerged in the sector. As compared to, if I have to quote, prior to that three years, we could only have 50 or 60 of them, that too doing job work of ISRO. Not exactly doing something transformational or trying to have an, its own launch vehicle or its own constellation up there. There were companies which were job workers of ISRO or DRDO, if I may. But in the past three years, we've seen about 250 of them. Wow. And plus. That's an impressive number. Taking our German ecosystem, we're talking about 100, 130 companies in the space sector in total. Okay, fair point. We are just 88 million people here in, in Germany, not 1.3 billion like in India. But it's an impressive number. Rainer, how do you see that? Absolutely. And then also in the adjacent services, when we were recently in India, we met several VCs who are increasingly specializing in space in deep tech, one of them entirely into space. We see private equity funds looking seriously at opportunities, others looking at financing carve-outs from the state space system. So there is something happening in India and we want to be part of it. What are your and your team's expectation, Rainer, to the office in India when it comes to growth and what areas are you tackling? Because space is a wide area. Yes. Look, Number one, all our four business areas, management consulting, technology consulting, executive summits and market intelligence already see work and inquiries from India and some of them have been serving India. From the most visible part back in September, we had an Indian delegation of over 20 people visiting our World Space Business Week and they realized this is a perfect platform to reach out beyond that. Market intelligence, if India is a growing part of the market, we need to have people on site and locally to research and help substantiate our global market research further. And of course, management consulting, which is the main part and the main ambition that we have in the country. And the work locally cannot be delivered by Western resources or Eastern resources from Japan, we have to provide expertise with local domestic people who have the credibility, but also the cultural understanding. What is your footprint in Asia for Nova Space right now? Currently, we have a good handful of people working in East Asia, in Tokyo, in Singapore, and okay, it's not exactly Asia as Australia. We serve the Middle East and Asia largely from Europe. And so we believe that by building a team in Bangalore, we should be able to serve potentially also other parts of the world from that region. So what are your expectations in terms of growth of the team? So with how many people will you start? And then what is the plan, the projections? So I think we are going to take it as we go along. We are trying to be very frugal in that way. Like we'll be starting with a small team because we are a consulting firm. We don't really are into manufacturing or something that we need like a 50 people on an 80 member team. So we're going to start with a lean team of about, let's say, three, four of us. And then as we go forward, as the geography responds to us and also the allied countries, maybe we are going to hire. And the office, as Rana just alluded, will be in Bangalore. Is there a particular reason for Bangalore over other major hubs? So, uh, one would be that I'm based out of Bangalore. Okay, but the point other taken. Would, but the other, of course, and the most important reason would be if we are to map all of these startups in the Indian map, about 80% or more are from Bangalore. Okay. So then again, and Israel is headquartered in Bangalore. So we want to be as close as possible to the, the humdrum of the site. No, that explains it. Perfectly. How does the interface to Paris or to Munich will look like? I think that sets us apart from other consulting firms. We are operating as a global team with functional special teams that work more closely together. 
Obviously, not everybody will be working with India at once, but we have sufficiently distributed capabilities in our team worldwide, all the way to Montreal and Washington, D.C., where we have specific knowledge that we want to make available to the Indian market, but also them sourcing potentially expertise or additional workforce from the Indian market. We are not cut into country organizations. We are not cut into two departmentalized sub-practices. So that will be a strong opportunity for us that we can now use. And also to add to that, currently, I think the managing partners of Nova Space are about six of them, about seven nationalities. So they're as global as it can be. Okay. I would like to come back to the expectations towards the Indian market, to the Indian space sector. It's a booming one, but if you put it into numbers, what are the expectations? We know from the global market, then there's this 1 trillion, 1.8 trillion dollar economy on the horizon, whatever numbers they're in. But can you give us some insights from the Indian market, what the world can expect from India in terms of so it Gross. is a published report of in space which says that space sector is going to be about a 44 billion dollar market by 2030 so it's a published report like there was a study done and the analysis and the outcome of it was that that we are expecting the size of it to reach 44 billion and then what areas if you break it down a bit more defense definitely would be one of them and defense and downstream to be majority of it so you don't see the launcher companies as one of the upcoming markets in its um, I definitely in see that. But if I have to make a comparative between in the value chain, let's say, downstream is what? Yeah, no, no doubt. But upstream is a cool part of it, obviously. <laughs> Yes. So what is cool about that, then I think you will be able to read a lot just about these days of the Indian market. Now, at the same time, we as Nova Space, we would like to address the needs of our clients and of people who would like to work with us and say, look, Indian market needs much more granularity in the future. And we are working on that now. We've been doing this from the outside. We've been using third party resources, but also now we have a team on the ground who can help deliver that promise. Good. Anything I missed about the opening of the office in India? Anything that is on your heart that you want to share with our audience? Well, we're looking forward to meet the uh, actors of the Indian space ecosystem at the uh, event here happening this week in Bangalore, in the Bangalore Tech Days, but also at the Indian Space Conclave. In those uh, events, we are launching the activity. And of course, in the coming weeks and months, we'll be there, we'll be on the ground, and you will see myself and other partners regularly visiting the country. Nice. And also, we have the Oman Business Summit that is coming up in January, wherein we are hopeful to see quite a number of people joining in from India and also weighing in on the tailwinds that we will be getting on the launch. So we are hoping at least we have a team of 20 startups joining us in the Middle East Conference. Great. Thank you very much and good luck with the office in India. Thank you. Thank you so much for Hoping us. to see you there sometime. If you have further questions, reach out to us at radio at spacewatch.global If you like these or other episodes of Space Cafe Radio, leave us a rating on your preferred podcast platform. It is the currency of today. And if you want to stay on the pulse of the space industry, please visit our website at www.spacewatch.global and subscribe to our newsletters. And of course, don't forget to become a Space Watcher. I'm Thorsten Kreening, publisher at spacewatch.global your independent perspective on space.